we are live. We are live. And you might recognize a little bit of a different scenario here because we are finally back in our studio, in-house, and we're able to do this Facebook Live. So very exciting today. Um, we're gonna be talking about the men's hymn collection of wigs. And I, uh, there's a lot of information here. So I just wanna make sure that I am going on here and that all of you are with us and that I can find you. And it's gonna be a great show. So very informative today. I have a wonderful guest I'm gonna introduce in just a second. And I think you guys are gonna get a lot out of this. Also, please feel free to ask your questions, anything you wanna know, this is the time to do it because just by asking a question, you're automatically entered in to win one of our new wigs, which is our Gallant wig, which we'll be showing you today and discussing um, in the top of the hour. And just keep asking those questions. And by the end, we'll have a little drawing. And so you can have yourself a new Gallant wig. Wonderful, wonderful. This is open to residents of the US only, guys. Sorry, because of shipping and all the issues we're having right now. Um, but stay tuned. Lots of information. You guys are going to love it. So without any further ado, I want to introduce you all to Michael Katz. Hello, Michael. Hi there. And Michael joins us. He's from a very own Kansas City. He joins us from A-List Wig Salon, located in Kansas City. And you can find him on Facebook at A-List Wig Salon or Instagram at Kansas City Wig. Is that correct? That's correct. Awesome. And so, Michael, I want to thank you first for being here. Um, you have a little bit of history in hair, and we're going to talk about that a little bit too. But um, Michael's also agreed to model some of these wigs for us today. So let's give this guy a round of applause. What a sport you are. <laughs> so, um, so Michael is in the wig business. Michael is also a hairstylist. And I just wanted to talk to you a little bit, Michael, because we were talking earlier and you were discussing a little bit. I had asked you how you got into wigs and hair and all of that. And so give me a little bit about your history, how long you've been in the hair business and, and what brought you to wigs. Perfect. I've been doing hair for about 14 years. I've been doing wigs for about two years. And really, it was kind of the, the drive to be self-employed and work for myself. And I work with my mom, actually. She is the owner and I am the manager of A-List Wig Salon. And um, what got us into it was, for me, it was a change, a change of pace. I was also, I'm also able to do hair on the side. Right. So it still lets me do what I previously loved, which I still love. But now I actually like doing wigs even more because I I get to help people and impact change many times a day, pretty instantaneously. Yeah, Somebody can walk in and not feel good and then leave feeling great. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, I mean, as a hairdresser, hairdresser to hairdresser, you've been doing hair how long now? 14 years. 14 years, right? It is, I mean, you're still doing the same thing with hair in a salon with people's bio hair, but usually the people that come in for wigs are kind of dealing with something a little different. Yes. And uh, I think you would agree that's probably the most rewarding part of dealing with wigs and, and hair pieces and all of that. So absolutely. So you're so now you are your mom, your has your mom always been in the wig business and then you just went into being a hairstylist or was it something that just evolved for both of you guys? My mom's never been involved in the hair business at all, whether wigs or human bio hair. Um, she was going in looking at wigs and she started talking to the gal that she was talking to that was retiring and she just started asking her about the business. She had me come over during my lunch break just to pitch some questions and she just said hey do you want to start a wig shop and i was like yeah why not oh my gosh that's so, awesome and i had you know i didn't know anything about wigs the only i had some basic preconceived notions that i feel like a lot of people have about wigs they picture like a big wiggy looking 80s wig when right. they don't know anything about them and then once i got in and saw these wigs on people and started putting them on people and working with them working with reps i started to see how amazingly real they look yeah um and especially when you get the right wig on the right person, how you wouldn't even know. Exactly. And I mean, one of the great things about, you know, Michael's shop and a lot of you guys out there too, is the ability to customize these for people is so important, right? Because that's how you can really take something from looking average to looking spectacular. And so we're going to be talking about that today and different ways that you can customize wigs. And I think it's particularly important, and you may agree or not agree, I don't know, but I think while you can customize a woman's wig, customizing a men's wig, I think is even more important. A hundred percent. Right? I absolutely. They, I think all men's wigs require some level of customization is what I'm, I'm learning. And, um, and you have to see the potential in them. And, and I, yeah, yeah, I definitely think so. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, everyone's shape is different. So we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna give you guys some tips on cutting. We're gonna give you guys some, uh, you know, clues on how you can make these look a little better for your customers. But we are gonna start, first of all, with our very first wig that we're gonna show. And we're going to be showing Gallant. And we're gonna pull up a picture of Gallant so you can have a look at it. Gallant is our newest wig in the HIM collection. And it is also um, one of the styles that's gonna give you a little bit more flexibility. It's longer in through the top, and then it's shorter in through the back. So it's a really nice style. If you got someone who wants to play with the top, who wants a little bit of wave, and you know wants to get that going. So. Michael, I'm going to have you put Galat on. And Michael's going to put that on for us. And so we can talk about it, right? So this is uh, Galant as it comes out of the box, right? And we were talking about styling it up a little bit. Galant out of the box, I'll bring this up a little closer, has that wave, has a little bit of movement into the top. And then it gets very short and tapered into the sides and back, okay? So you have flexibility here. The construction on Galant is a complete lace front. It goes ear to ear. So the lace extends all the way down the sides, which gives it a very natural look. That is all done by hand, hair by hair. And then we go into a full mono top, which gives you a ton of parting options, a lot of flexibility. And then we have some hand tied area right into the back and then some wefting just to give a little density in the nape. And we have silicone ear tabs, a silicone nape, this all makes the wig feel very secure, even though it is super light. So we wanna look at this. I'm showing this today, and Michael is wearing it today, uh, in the 1222 SS, which is our, let me see, that is our shaded medium ash blonde. So now Michael has trimmed his up a little bit. He hasn't done a whole lot of work to it because we still wanna give you the overall feel of the wig, but this is it out of the box. And we'll take a look at it on Michael. Look at that. So he's got it on. So here's what we're talking about. Um, if you're looking at this wig, we wanna show, this is a highlighted one. So the 1222 has like a bolder, chunkier highlight with the root area. So it gives it a little more gritty, a little more earthy and a little bit more you know, rough and tumbled kind of grown out look. So that's the color for you if you like that. So I wanna take a close look here because I wanna show you, I'm gonna have Michael turn over this way. This is what you guys wanna look for, right? If you are looking here, this is the area where we need, we're talking about customization. If we're looking right around the ear, this is one of the things you want to pay attention to. Here is where the lace ends. Here is where his beard starts and his sideburns, right? So what we want to do, most of the time, I would tell you guys, he's left it a little longer here, but this is the area where you're going to want to go in and you're going to want to texturize. Now, I like to texturize in bits. I will pull the hair. I never make a cut in the same place twice. So what you wanna do is you wanna work your way around that ear tab so that you can soften that and you can create a blended area. This is very important. Now, some of you guys can do this at home. Some of you may wanna you know, go to your wig salon and have someone work on it with you, but this is the area that most of the time you wanna work on. Now, you know, the reason why this is important is because while we, you know, while we sell these and they're ready to wear and all of that, they still can be customized. They still could use a little bit more fine tuning. We leave the lengths here so you can play with them. So you can customize it. Every man's ear is in a different place. Um, the side of their face is longer or shorter, depending. And so all of this is very important. And I just keep trimming away at it a little by little. And eventually you'll get to the area where you know that you have to, you know, you stop basically, right? Now, one of the questions I get is, can you take a clipper to this? Michael, we've heard this, right? Can we take a, can we take a clipper to this? Uh, Michael, what's your answer to that? Oh, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you. I wouldn't take a clipper to it either. I don't find that to be, uh, I think that find it at a very risky proposition. You might want to, you might want to, you know, think twice about doing that because, you know, here's the thing about these is they are wigs, they do not grow. And you want to keep that in mind, okay? Because once you do it, it is over. It is over. I would say especially with wefted pieces. Especially, you know what? Exactly, especially wefted pieces because you have that weft that you have to contend with. And that is not good. I mean, it, it is a stronger uh, underlayment, which most people's you know, natural heads don't have. So again, I can also do a scissor over comb. So you can lift that up and then thin it. 
you're going to notice that I very, very rarely use uh, regular shears because I think it's all about texture. You want to create a gradation. So this is one of the things you're, you're doing and you're working towards. Now, I could even go into this area if I wanted to. So it's all up to you where you want to take it. But the main thing, I think, is to keep that ear clean, to have it looking nice. And you know, Michael's already done some preliminary trimming on the nape, which you can see. So that is already finishing up in a nice area. You will also find with the wigs that in the men's collection that we do leave a little bit extra length in the back and sides. And we do that on purpose so that again, you can customize it to each client or customize it to yourself and what you need. You know, some men like, you know, want their nape to finish like, you know, longer, some want a little higher. The whole idea is taking these and making them your own. Now, what kind of, you know, what kind of, you know, products are we using in here? This has just been wet. We put a little hairspray in it. Um, I think, Michael, you primarily run your hands through it, right? Typically. I mean, you haven't done, you really haven't worked this wig too much, right? Tell me what you did to this one to get yeah. it. To this one, it was just trimming of the nape. I didn't really get to trim over my ears because it was on my head. Right. Um, so I didn't have anyone work on it on me. Um, I would like to go in and take a couple inches off. And, yeah. And thin it pretty heavily. Yes. Um, is what I would like to do for myself. Right. Um, but that's that's about it. And what I did was I gave it I gave it a part, and then I, like I said, I thinned it out, and then I put some of the um, some leave-in conditioner and let it dry. Right. So you know it's maintenance, but it's not super high maintenance, right? So I think that's really important for you guys to understand is that from a styling standpoint, you've got to use a little product. You've got to trim it up a little bit if you really want these to look great, right? So, you know, it's not really exactly out of the box. I think like women's wigs, you can get around it a little bit because they can play with it and it's a little longer length. It's just, you know, just sometimes using your fingers to style it can change it up. With a men's wig, it's a little different. You got to put a little effort into it. Um, well, I think, I mean, you could wear them out of the box, but I don't think it's super duper awesome. Um, one of the things we want to look at too on Gallant is the hairline. I mean, this is all hand tied. And I think it's really important to note that the hair, if you look to the sides a little bit, Michael, let's kind of see that. You can just kind of see that it gives it a very natural appearance. Okay. And you can adjust it depending where you want to go. So if you want to extend the forehead a little bit, you can move it back a little bit, right? wherever it fits right for you, or you can move it down a little bit. It's, they're very flexible. The, I usually think worn, worn a little bit further back looks a little more natural. And so that's, that's my personal advice on that. So this is the gallant. And again, um, you know what, Michael, can you turn this show us the back a little bit? I just want you guys to see the back on this one, how this just kind of flows back. And then how this all has this really tight tapering into the back. So again, this one, the 1222SS is a very highlighted look. And you know what, guys? This can be yours. Just ask us some questions and join the group. And we'll have like much more to follow. But again, a nice tousled movement. This is not too constructed. Um, I mean, for all intents and purposes, you can run your hands through this and make it as like full as you want, or you can really wear it like tapered down. So again, this is Gallant in the 1222SS. So let me have a look here. Um, Alan wants to know, hi, Alan. Alan wants to know, is this glued on? Alan, this is not glued on. This is um, basically attached just by the structure of the wig cap. So we have like, we have wefting in here, but we also have the silicone ear tabs and the silicone nape, which helps it stay on and helps it feel secure. This is also a stretch lace into the front. So you don't have to glue this down unless you really want to. I mean, do you feel fairly comfortable and confident that you can wear this pretty much all day? Absolutely, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. And it's not, un it's not too tight either, so. Yeah, like I find, okay, so like for me, I have an extra large head. These are average large sizes, okay? I have a, I would need like a large, extra large wig. We don't make them yet, unless you guys write in and tell us you want them, then we will. But right now we don't. Um, and so if your head is a little larger sometimes, you will find that during the course of the day, it might ride up, okay? Um, now there's ways to adjust these. If you go to wig salon, they can open it up a little bit. There's some little tricks that we can do. But for all types of purposes, this is an average large. And I mean, what are you probably like? You seem like an average head shape, right? Average too large. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm larger front to back. Yeah, um, okay. 
Yeah. So, and you seem to seem like it, it fits fine, right? Yeah. We're in good shape. Absolutely. Awesome. So see guys, don't be afraid. Uh, <laughs> you know, cause there's, we do get the question a lot. Like, is there a chance that this, this wig might fall off? And I, I haven't had anybody say that it's fallen off. I mean, have you ever experienced that? Anyone saying that it's fallen off? No, not, not unless they're very, very flat back here, but not in the men's pieces. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't recommend like skydiving in it, but no. I mean, just saying. <laughs> so Don't worry about large birds. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, guys, this is Gallant. This is new to the collection. And I'm going to show you another one. We're going to dive into classic. Classes, classic has been a very good style for us. And we're going to want to look into that. And so, Michael, would you do us the honors? I'm going to show classic as it comes right out of the box. So this is our classic wig. And I am showing this today. What do I have here? I have it in the M38S, which is the uh, gray, 30% gray with light ash blonde. So it's got a light ash blonde base. And then you have 30% gray woven throughout it. So um, this is out of the box. So again, you have the length around the ears and you have the length in the nape. Let me talk to you guys a little bit about construction on this. So this is an extended lace, again, ear to ear. Um, and then we have a more contoured front on this. If you notice, this one looks and gives the appearance of more of a recession. Do you see that? Then we have a hand tied top uh, or monofilament top rather hand tied back completely except for the two wefts in the back which give it support. And then the silicone nape and the silicone ear tabs, that is gonna give you the control and the staying power that you need. Now, one of the things because of this more scalloped, uh, rounded out front is depending on your head shape, you may find that it lifts, okay? If it does lift, you can use a little toupee tape on it. You can use a little bit of uh, glue and um, you shouldn't have a problem with it. Most people, however, are good to go. So again, ta-da, the man is ready. So I really, this color I really like on you a lot, a lot. And I want you guys to, to <laughs> you'll get there eventually. I wish I had it too. I don't have it quite this uniform. So you guys can see the 30% gray blended with the light ash blonde base. Now, again, we're gonna go a little closer. I wanna see this hairline again. Look at this hairline. I'm gonna turn Michael this way. So this here, you have the recession. This is what I was talking about. This one recedes a little bit more. In the Gallant, it cuts across this way. So you have a little more fill in through here. With this one, you have that nice sculpted arrangement there. So if you have someone with a recession, I think this is more suited to you because you do have a little bit more of a recession there. Mm -hmm. So, and I want you guys to see this too. Look at in through the part line here. Look at how the hair looks like it's growing right out of the scalp. I mean. That is pretty incredible to me. So that is one of the features of a monofilament top, hand tied one by one. And again, on this style, again, here's what we would do to customize, right? We would look at this, we wanna look at the area where this is falling. And again, I like to start little by little. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to, I'm gonna turn Michael a little bit more this way. What you're gonna to wanna to do is see where his hair meets the ear tab, right? And then you're going to sculpt backward, sculpt on a diagonal back line, okay? Again, no two same cuts in the same place. You're going to whittle it down, okay? Little by little. You really wanna be careful with this because it's so important, this hair does not grow back. So um, I like to recommend a professional uh, or someone who you know, maybe has had some experience with hair before. Again, I'm using a thinning shear, okay? I'm just working around the area very lightly. You kind of almost want to let it go on its own so you can really see where the hair is kind of moving towards because the hair will tell you. While it's not 100% uh, human hair, these are synthetic fibers. This is true to life fiber. It is moldable. And you know you can cut this on a block, but I really think the best way to do it, uh, Michael, we kind of talked about this a little bit, right? The best yeah. way to do it is to, to have someone do it for you. Because I said to Michael, I said, oh, did you trim up the wigs? And he's like, well, I did about as far as I could go on, my, on myself. <laughs> and that's a good point because you don't, you know, you don't want to go too far. Now I'm going to show you guys, if you're working around an ear and you want to use a regular blade, a regular shear, what you're going to want to do is never cut in a solid motion. 
you want to point cut always, okay? Always point cut into a wig. So I'm going to get rid of some of the longer ones now and I'm point cutting into it. Okay, you have to use a little bit of finesse and you have to be very gentle. Now, don't get too worked up in the point cutting because we're going to go back and we're going to take our shear over comb technique again and we're going to blend that. So just work it down. So, and you will see eventually, poor Michael, <laughs> eventually you can see where we're getting to that area where now we're getting there. And then it's just about going in and refining. You know, you can go a little shorter along the side of the ear, um, but then I always like to leave this little area to play with and refine even more. So again, that's how you work these areas. And I really thought it was important for us to do a show today where we're showing you a little bit of technique because I think sometimes we, you know, we're always talking about customize, customize, customize. And then what does that really mean and how do we really do it? So um, I just wanted you guys to get a look at that. Um, you know, we, we, we of course do all this customization on the models when we do the photo shoots. And I've had people say like so many times, like, oh, that's not really the, like the wig, that's their hair. And I promise you, it is the wig. We just do this to it. You know, we work around those ears. And I've also had people who have written in um, on YouTube and, and or Facebook and whatnot and said, hey, you know, um, you know, I got the wig and it doesn't look that way. And mine has a really long back. And why are the back so long? And why are the nape so long and the ears so long? Again, this is why. Because every man has a different shape here. Every man wants this to fall someplace different. And I mean, really, when you're getting in here, you're going to need that extra room to play with to make it your own. So you can see as we're working with it, it's coming along. And I could take this much further, um, but I don't want to keep you guys here all day. So let me just go in there. So what do we use? A little bit of water always helps. I give a little miss. Sorry, Michael. Oh, that's good. Give it a little miss, you could see where it's going. So here we are. So taper down. Again, guys, just keep working. I could still work a little bit more, but I don't want to keep you here for too long because we got some other wigs and other styles to look at. So, I mean, you can see the difference here. This is where you can see the ear tap right here, okay? This is where that length is. Michael just tucked it behind his ear, but here's that length that you have to work with. And then this is when you start working with it, okay? So you can get it to comprehension. You can even take some of these and point cut in through there. I sometimes will take my shears. I will like slide cut through there, okay? And that creates a little bit more random texture. So it doesn't look so perfect because, you know, I guess sometimes maybe the less perfect it looks, the better is kind of like my, my opinion on it. So again, we're looking at this hairline. We are looking at classic. Uh, this is the classic style. And again, just, it is a classic style. I mean, there really is a nice shape to it. Very easy to work with. And again, you can make this as, as voluminous as you want it or not, but here's what we're going for. We're just going for a classic tidy look. Um, again, this, you could chop up a little bit, you know, take these sides down and you can kind of like, you can almost even faux hawk this a little bit if you want. So it's up to you where you want to go with it. Um, Michael, any comments on this one? Because I like this one a lot. Um, this is the one I got probably the most excited about. Yeah, honestly. yeah. Um, just because it's closer to what I'm used to see my hair as. Right. And well, you know what's interesting is even though your beard is a little darker, right? Yeah. I mean, and even though this is a lighter color, you can certainly get away with even the lighter color, uh, even though you might have like, you know, a darker beard. And that is one of the things that like, I want to let you guys know too. Um, you know, you should kind of get a wig that is as close as possible to your natural hair color. That's like super important because you want it to look natural. You want it to look like yourself, right? Um, and then you can experiment later after you feel comfortable wearing them. But, um, but even something like this, because these colors are all ash-based, I mean, one of the great things about them is even though Michael's beard is a little darker, that ash-based still kind of works with it, you know? Um, so yes, we are showing this one. Again, you guys, this is the classic. This is 38S. It's got 38% gray in it. And then it has a light ash blonde base. So 
And you can just see the difference. I mean, when you look at this side, you can see the bulk there, but then when you get into here, I mean, you can just see how we've tapered it out. Now, a question we get a lot too is, you know, what do you do to thin it out if it's a little too bulky? I'm gonna show you guys, these are like, these are like my tools, okay? So I like to use a five blade notcher. This is important for getting down to the base. If you wanna create looseness, if you wanna remove a lot of density really fast, that's the way to go. Again, regular shears to point cut and then texturizing blades. I sometimes have, I might have like six texturizing blades. I don't know about you, even when you're doing like customer's hair, right? Yes. So yeah, just like you would be doing a regular customer's hair, you're gonna wanna use a bunch of different texturizing blades. These are like maybe 32 teeth. So they really, they remove a lot of hair and a lot of bulk fast. But um, you guys can see from here, I'm just gonna say, if you wanna remove some bulk, see that there's like this bulk and there's this wave in here. If it's too much, depending on where it falls on the customer's head, I'm just gonna show you this. What you wanna do is leave a little longer area along the part line, grab the back, and I say go down to the base, okay? You wanna remove that bulk from the base of the wig, okay? And then you're gonna strip all that out and you're gonna remove a lot of bulk. Now see how that lays? So you have to be really cautious. Go down to the base, remove that. And again, baby steps, remist. And then we're gonna comb again. And then we'll get that to just lay down. And it just, it works. If you go, if you go in the mid shaft, like we were talking about this, Michael, if you're gonna thin a wig and you're gonna go into like the mid part of the hair, you're still gonna get that bulk at the base, okay? So it depends what your overall goal is. For some of you, you may just wanna create some movement at the ends um, and you like the, the density that's at the base, but if you want to you know, break up that density at the base, you need to go all the way down. And I would not say to do it with a thinning shear. Well, you could, you could, all depends. All depends how much volume and how much mass you wanna take out. So, um, and then, you know, we could just use regular product. Um, I like to use a wax, we can use hairsprays, all of that stuff. So this is our, <laughs> our classic wig. Michael, thank you for wearing the classic. <laughs> so I just wanted to check here. I know you guys have had some questions. Um, just wanna see, cause I've been missing him cause I've been cutting. So, okay. First of all, let me say hi to Jack. Let me say hi to Robert. Uh, Amy Garrison is here. Hi, Miss Amy Garrison DeWitt. She says, do you suggest for these kinds of styles to completely shave a head so it lays down better? Ah, someone else asked me that. Um, I don't really recommend that. I mean, most of the men, I think, unless they're doing this for fashion or to change up their look, are going to have a minimal amount of hair. So I would suggest that um, they just slick it back with the, with the gel or even just wet, just slick it back. And then when their hair is dried, you can put the wig on over it. These are not meant to be bonded. So you really don't have to be shaved bald at all for this. Um, what other questions do I have here? I wanna to try to get to you guys, I'm sorry. Um, Marie says, I've worked with one of the wigs and had a problem with both sides laying the same way. She thinks the hair might be uh, vented differently on each side. Um, I believe this is, you're talking, if you're talking about venting, I believe you're talking about a hand tied wig. I would say one of the things, if you're having problems because the hair has been sitting in a box, right? It's kind of formed a little bit of a set. If you're having trouble with it, usually I recommend shampooing uh, the wigs in cold water. However, if, you, if you're finding that it's set a little way, because it's heat-friendly fiber, you can shampoo these in warmer water and then get them on the block right away, which we are going to talk about how to do that and how to redirect some of the venting. So that's we are there. Sandy, how are you? She says, how close to the base do you thin to remove some bulk? Sandy, as I said, depends what you want to do. If you want to create just a light airiness, then you can use like a 32 you know, a 32 teeth uh, notcher or something like that. Or if you really want to remove a lot of bulk, you can use a five blade notcher or six blade notcher, but go down to the base. Be careful how you do this guys, because again, you know, practice on an old wig or something like that. So you know how much control you have. And so you know what to expect because you don't want to mess this up, right? <laughs> no, not at all. I have, I have done. Yeah, we, we've all done it, right? I mean, you have to start somewhere. And so you have to, you know, you have to practice and you have to learn and you have to realize it's very important. I mean, I've been working with clients. You work with clients all the time. We know what effect it has on clients' bio hair, but it's a little different when you're going into a wig because the fiber is a little sturdier. It projects a little differently than human bio hair. And so it is with caution that you must take. But I say, 
practice on a mannequin so you start to see what your blades do on a on wig hair. It's very important. It doesn't have that weight. Yes, yes. So John, hey, how you doing? He says, how do they run? I think he says, how much do they run in price? The wigs can run anywhere. I think God from. I'm saying they go from maybe two, maybe the maybe the 300 to 500, depending on the. Um, on the actual construction. Hand tied is gonna cost you more. I'm not 100% sure where we're pricing right now. Um, but you know, these are a great option. You know, we compare these a lot of times to human hair, which can run you like into the thousands. One of the things you need to know about the men's wigs is they're a nice alternative. Any of us who are in the industry, if you've been doing men's hair replacement or anything like that, you know that it's been very hard because it's human hair has been very difficult to get because there are supply chain issues. And uh, because of COVID and, and then also transportation issues. So if you have someone who's transitioning or you have a guy who is in the, in the hair replacement field, but needs to get some hair in between, wigs are a great way to do it. And customizing them also is a very good way to go about it. Um, so uh, anyway, MRSP, MRSP for the wigs runs somewhere around 299 to 1200 depending, because we do have human and synthetic blends. Those are gonna cost you a little bit more because of human hair. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about what to do with the wig, because I get this question a lot. So you've shampooed your wig, right? Here it is, I, I wet it, I mean, I washed this, shampooed it, and towel dried it, okay? But it's still very damp, okay? So one of the things you wanna do is I tell everybody, if you're really like, if you wanna do this right, you need to have a wig block. I don't know, you style your wigs on a wig block, right, Michael? I do. Yeah, it's kind of, I mean, it helps, right? I don't think there's really any way you can do it and do it well without a wig block. So, um, and especially if you want to do your own, hello. So I take the wig, I put it on the wig block. You are going to want to pin it. I like to pin it directly under the silicone. There's a little bit of a band there. That's where I would pin it. I do ear tab to ear tab, okay? You don't want to do it totally, you know, soaking wet, okay? You want to kind of towel dry it. And then you can put some here in the nape as well. Really, I don't find that I need a whole lot to secure it. I can get by completely with four uh, T-pins. So I would say have a mannequin block ready, four T-pins, get that secured. And then I'm going to show you, I always miss, so you get, <laughs> get it right. and you And you tell me, Michael, if you do it, if you do anything different, you tell me. So. And you guys, if we're gonna detangle them, I would say a wide tooth comb, uh, essential. And this brush, I love this. This is a wood brush completely, except for the rubber base. And it's got like wooden pins in it. So that it's very flexible. You don't want anything that's going to pull on the hair. Boar bristle, forget it, okay? You wanna do something like this. So I start to comb and I start to direct it where I want it, okay? So I know I want this to come down and I'm going to brush it in the side that I want, okay? while it's wet. So I'm detangling with the wide tooth comb. Then again, remist because it's heat friendly fiber, you can let it air dry like this completely. Or I got to tell you, nothing, nothing escapes me that I haven't put a blow dryer to. So then I start to direct the hair. Okay. So I know that I'm going to want to go in this direction, slight diagonal back. So I start directing the hair. Do you don't want to hold this right on top of the hair. You want to just kind of Pull it, direct it, and then start to get it drying in the area that you want it to. So if you want it to be down in this area, start brushing it down. Depends how your customer's gonna wear it or how you're gonna wear it. You know, like on Michael, you know, he's wearing it kind of down here. If he was a week, you know, where it swept back, we were trying to dry it in that motion. And I pretty much say, you gotta wash and shampoo all. Don't you say, like the men's wigs especially, shampoo them before you even start wearing them or start working with them because they really need to have that nice fresh base to start with. So if I'm gonna start directing this back, I'm gonna use a little bit of heat here. I'm doing medium heat and I'm just directing the hair where I need it to go, okay? If you want it flatter, you know, you start to direct it down. One of the things I tell a lot of the ladies that I work with is before I cut anything on their wigs, and yes. it's just a little bit at the nape of the front of the bangs, yes. I tell them to get it home, wash it, and then if, if you need anything, I then call Yeah, it. absolutely. And I mean, men's though, it's like, that's the difficult. Yeah, but I mean, you know, guys, if you think about it, if you're going to a salon, right, 
they're going to shampoo your hair before they start to cut it most of the time. So there's a reason for that, right? You want to start out with a fresh, clean base. Any setting lotions that might have been on this from uh, from the packaging or the factory, you want to get you know you want to get rid of that. So then we can begin our process, right? So once we've got it fairly dry, then we can start to look at it, and then again, now we can start moving and trimming throughout the whole form. We can you know try this on your customer, or if you've already taken a measurement, you know you want to bring that up to there you can start thinning. Again, I recommend scissor over comb, okay? So you're gonna pull the hair out and you're going to thin like so. Just take, just move down the hair, okay? That's how you're gonna do it. So, and then you can use product and use whatever you want to style it. So, now we got a few more wigs to show you, uh, but first, I think it's probably really good. One of the questions we get asked all the time is color, right? It's like, I got the catalog, I can't tell. And I hear you guys, I hear you. That's why we always recommend a color swatch, a color ring, because it's really important if you're trying to select colors for your customers, right? But I'm gonna take you through this because I do understand when we print catalogs, you know, every printing company is different. Sometimes the colors are a little warmer, sometimes they're a little cooler, brighter, darker. There's no way to get it 100%. It's a guide. Color swatches are the best. I saw, when I came to your place, I saw you had a ton of color swatches. I couldn't live without it. Right? <laughs> so, and you know what, even hairdressers, you know, I try not to use them, but even hairdressers, when you're talking hair color on bio hair, you know, you pull out a color chart. I mean, it's just, you want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So I'm going to take you guys through some of the colors. Let's go take a look now. And hopefully just having it here on this video might help you a little bit more. So let's start out. So the first color we are going to look at is uh well first of all all these wigs are the wig called style so that's what we have all these colors on so this is our style wig and the first one we're going to look at is the m1s this is black this is not a blue black this is just a nice neutral black there's there's nothing you know really saturated about it so it's a very easy color to wear if you're in the dark side then we're going to go to m3s this is our darkest brown so this would be you know, the deepest, deepest brown. Think of an espresso color for that, okay? We're going to look at M5S. This is the medium brown, okay? This is a medium brown. Um, it tends to be a little warmer, okay? So it's a neutral brown. It's a natural brown, uh, maybe similar to my hair, okay? Um, then we're going to have the M7S. M7S is an ash brown. If you're between the medium brown, uh, or if you're between M5S and M7S, M7S is the one that's going to have less red in it, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now we go into M280S, which is 20% gray with the darkest brown base, okay? So you can see that. You've got some salt and pepper look it's very evenly spaced this is like i said the 20 percent mix into a basically the darkest brown hair color that we have then we're going to take you guys into the m36s this is 20 percent gray like the other one you just saw however this is in a light brown base so you can see that this has you know a, a lightness to it this is not very saturated but it's super natural looking i really like this one a lot 34S is this one. This is 10% gray in a medium brown. So you can see the difference between these two. You got your light brown with your 20% gray, and then you got 10% gray in a medium brown, okay? So we move on. Now we're getting a little lighter. This is our M17S. This is our light ash blonde, and that's basically what it is. It's probably like, for those of you who are hairdressers, this is probably a level eight ash, okay? And that is the light ash brown. Then we get into the dark ash blonde. So now we're getting into our blondes. This would be your Robert Redford color, I guess, is how I would describe this. This is M14S, okay? So this is that nice ash blonde for someone who wants no red. I mean, some of these colors, if you can get these wigs to fit on some of your women customers who want complete ash, I mean, you can always put them into a men's wig and shape it for them. Um, this color is M51S. This is 50% gray mixed with a light ash blonde. So as we were talking before, you know, you have the ash blonde and then you have the gray mixed in it. You can see it does cool it off even more, okay? Then we come to, got a lot of colors, guys. Uh, M44S, which is this one. And M44S is 50% gray 
mixed with the darkest brown base, okay? So this is more than salt and pepper on this one, okay? You're gonna have a nice, lighter, gray-haired looking mix on this. Then we get to the M38S, which is 30% gray, mixed with the light ash blend, okay? So this really has the overall effect of gray hair with just a little peak of like dark blonde color coming through there. Um, so we call this M38S, 30% gray, light ash blend. Then our lightest color in the collection is M56S. This is 90% gray with just some little, little glimmers, 10% of the ash brown, okay? So this is the lightest color we offer. And then we get to our last color, which is M1222S. And M22S, 1222S, is the shaded medium ash brown. Because as you can see, this has a rooted area. We've applied a rooted area to the base, and then we've done like a highlighted look on it. So this is what we were showing Gallant in earlier in the show. Um, and that's what Michael was wearing. So that's it for our colors, guys. I hope that helps you a little bit more than perhaps maybe, you know, a swatch book but get those real swatches because you know they're amazing, right? <laughs> so let me go back over to Michael. Michael, let's put on a new wig, right? Let's look at our next one. The next wig that we are gonna show is the Daring, which is our like funky kind of fun. It's got a lot of like animation and all that good stuff with it. So if you want something kind of like a surfer dude or you want something a little bit more rock starish, this is the one you should go with, right? So. Let me tell you about the construction on Daring. So Daring is ear to ear lace. Uh, it has a mono part, okay? It is fully wefted. Um, so you will see in the back, so you will see that this is probably gonna be a great style at a pretty good price point because you don't have all the hand tying and hand knotting in there. Again, also the silicone ear tabs and the silicone nape. So it stretches, it accommodates a lot of head sizes. I, of all the wigs that we have, with my large head, I can actually wear this one, okay? So again, we're showing it in 1222S. Michael, look at you, just whip that on. How, I gotta ask you, what- what started my own band. You started, you started your own band, <laughs> exactly. What did you, I know like you had this before you brought it in today, what did you do to this? Did you customize it at all? What did you have to do to it? This one I just got wet and brushed, and then um, I trimmed up the nape just a little bit. Um, and the sides, I actually wanted to leave this one longer just yeah. to see the potential. I would probably thin it out even just a little more, but not much. I actually really do just like the shape. Yeah, I think it's kind of, it is kind of fun. It is kind of rocker-ish. And uh, it's, you know, I have it flat ironed on the mannequin that you guys saw where I was showing the color. I had flat ironed this on a medium heat just to give it a more like well, Keith Urban kind of textured look to it. But you really don't have to do a lot to this. I mean, and I love that you can wear this off. In the photograph of the model that we shot, I think I did style it like a, a little bit like a pompadour, like really high with like the yeah. volume into the top. Um, but I think this is a style for a young guy. I mean, I think this really suits a young guy really well. And again, this can be customized too. You have the highlight in through the front, you know. Um, and then what you can also do is if you find that this highlight is a little bold, you can also texturize it, okay? So I will just go through it and I will just take my texturizing blades and just work through it so that you soften the appearance of it a little bit, okay? It won't be so bold. Uh, same thing up and through here. I just take a little bit off so you soften the edges of it. And that's the idea. It's also looking at the color, look how the color lays and see what you can do to it to customize it for your face shape for what you want to achieve with it. Again, I mean, I wanna take just a closer look at this uh, color because I want you to see this highlighted look. Again, this is the 1222 SS. And I mean, it really just sings. I mean, <laughs> this is like, I just love this. I mean, that's why I could wear this too because I got a little extra length. Um, but yeah, so you guys feel free to try this one out and this is a great one to have in the salon i think because this looks great on on so many people and it looks so uncontrived right so there's a lot of movement in it there's a lot of a lot of play in it and i just think it's a fun wig to wear um again if you are one to customize you know you're going to pull that hair thin it out a little bit and just create a little bit of softness and it just help it to blend a little bit but because of the length in this one i mean this one I mean, look at the length on this. This is long enough that you really don't have to do anything with it. I mean, 
it just kind of falls. And he can even take this and totally work this behind his ear and just kind of like tuck it behind a little bit. So Brad Pitt, we're coming for you, <laughs> right? We're going to go for it. So you guys, let me check out some more questions. Let me see what we got. And then we'll go back. Um, let's see, what do we have here? Um, oh, Michelle says she loves the rooted colors. They are, they're kind of cool, right? They're pretty natural too, as well. So you guys, this is a fun wig. And again, you know, as I was saying before, we can miss and take our little brush to it and we can flatten it out. We can direct it. Don't be afraid to do that. Again, you want to do it on the actual person who's wearing it. That's, you know, that's the best way to do it. So work your blow dryer through it, create the look you want. I mean, it is about having a little bit of fun too. I mean, obviously, you know, people turn to wigs because of hair loss. You know, we know they turn to wigs because they're on, you know, just genetics and thinning and stuff like that. But I mean, if we try to approach it, I think from a fun aspect or joyful aspect, it can also be kind of rewarding too, you know? Um, I don't know. I just find it to be, be something that sometimes we take for granted. I mean, I, I do have one or two. This one in particular in my wardrobe, when I want to have blonde highlights like this, <laughs> this is my go-to wig and it fits. Like I said, that stretch cap is amazing, okay? So if you got someone who is on the larger side, I think the daring in the stretch cap works great because you still have the lace feature. Someone asked me, do they need to take a tub bath or wear a shower cap with this? Uh, no, guys, because it's a wig and it comes off, right? So you don't have to worry about that. It's going to, I mean, you're going to take it off anyway. Um, the only time you ever have to worry about that is with bonded pieces. If you're doing a men's hair replacement system where you're shaved and then the piece is bonded on, not with a wig. Um, so if you guys are interested, for those of you who are watching, which are already our accounts, hello, 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 you know where to get these. But for those of you who are watching and are interested, just visit our website and then uh, it'll give you a list of authorized dealers, okay? So just want to let you know that. Also, I don't know if you've noticed this, but if you guys are going online, you will find a lot of companies are using our photographs, our wig photographs, um, and telling you that, you know, you can get it for them online for like, next to nothing right and the truth is um they're not it's not us so be careful because we we have to track these people down and make sure that they're not using our images and saying that it's their product and most of the time you'll order that and you'll get something completely different that is not even close to the quality of these so for those of you who may be watching this and are thinking to order one of these online make sure you're buying from an authorized dealer it's the only way you're going to know you're getting the right product. There's a lot of knockoffs and there's a lot of, you know, phony baloney going on out there online. So just wanted to let you know that. Go to your wig salon, <laughs> okay? So what's the next one we wanted to look at? I think we're gonna look at, oh, we're gonna look at distinguished, but I like this so much on you, I don't even wanna take it off. So <laughs> you're gonna wear like this out. This one a lot. You're gonna wear it out this weekend, right? Yeah, I've, got a, I've got a brown one too. You do? All right, awesome. So see, all right, well, Okay, Michael, we're gonna move into the next one. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about our next one. The next wig we're gonna be looking at is Distinguished. Now, what about Distinguished? Okay, Distinguished is one of two wigs which we have released that is 60% human hair and 40% heat stylable hair, okay? So we've given you a blend on this. This is a wig that must be fully customized um, because you have the human hair and the synthetic blend. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about the construction on this. So you're going to get the ear to ear lace on this and you're gonna see it's not as scalloped or as rounded as some other styles. So make sure you reference the catalog so you know which styles have a deeper recession and which ones have a more subtle recession, okay? They are mixed. Um, and then this one is full mono top. Uh, you have the silicone ear tabs, and then it's fully hand tied in the back with a silicone nape. So very light, very breathable, um, total styling and parting options on this as well, okay? I am showing this one in the, the Distinguished in the M36S, okay? So this is the 20% gray and light ash brown mix. And also I think that is the same color that Michael's gonna be wearing for us. But one of the things you need to know 
about the human hair synthetic blend is the more white you get, we cannot get that white in a human hair, okay? So the more white percentage that you're gonna get in your wig, it's not necessarily gonna be 60, 40. It might go to, you know, 50, 50 human synthetic or it might go 60, 40 human synthetic. So, or 40, 60. So keep that in mind. The more ratio of white, the more synthetic you're gonna get. Just so you know, that's how we get that nice crisp white in there, okay? So, all right, this is you in a wavy look. We've parted it on a different side, Michael. <laughs> so again, I'm just gonna remiss. Um, but you can just see this one, the distinguished has some wave in it, okay? So if you got a guy who's got a natural wavy texture to his hair, uh, this is a good one to go with. And what did you do to this one, Michael, in your preparation? for coming here today just curious this one i didn't do anything because i i really this is my favorite one uh-huh um for the feel uh for the fit also just because i really like the wavy texture what i want to do to it is take about an inch off uh-huh everywhere and just right. kind of leave it wavy which you could totally um, do just because i think it looks really natural this is also my favorite color this is a great color on you so you guys michael is wearing the m36s so if you're interested in what that color looks like, I mean, you can see it on him. And I have to say, again, I think this totally goes with your, um, your color of your beard. Even though it's a little darker, it's still picking up of the shadows in there, which I think really, which really works, you know? And again, I'm sorry to do this to you, Michael, but I'm gonna wet the front because I want people to see the hairline on this. So you guys, we're gonna take a closer look at the hairline. So just look at this. And this is what we're talking about right up in through here this hand tied area. I'm just gonna lift that up so you can see there is the lace uh, and then it just sits right on his natural hairline. And so you can wear this up and away. Now I've also had some people, um, I do a lot of times is I will go in and I will sometimes take some tweezers and I will make that hairline a little more jagged. So all you have to do, let me just point this out to you. Not with the cheers, I just don't have my tweezers with me. Is you just go in here and you're just going to tweeze out some little hairs, okay? You're gonna break up those knots and you can create a more erratic hairline. That's another way to get the hairline to look even more natural because not everybody has a perfectly straight hairline, you know? Well, I mean, some might say I do, but. Yeah, so I was about to be like... <laughs> another reason why I can't wear these wigs is because my hairline's a little low. So I'd have to put the wig like almost down here, which doesn't look right at all. I mean, I'm already look like Eddie Munster, give me a break. So, but yes, I love the Distinguished. It's got some nice wave, some movement. Uh, this is also just a nice look. I mean, if you look at the sides, I mean, it just has that natural texture that a lot of men have. And like, like Michael said, he hasn't done anything to this yet. So, I mean, imagine if he really wanted to, he could really shape down the ears. He could really like mold this into whatever he needs. Um, again, you guys, I always say you want to wet the hair. Now on the human hair synthetic blends, I, you know what, Michael, this is my, I don't know if you found the same thing, but I think the best thing to do is shampoo them right away when you get them in, before you wear them in warm water with professional salon quality shampoo. Most of the time I say cold water if you want to keep the shape, but in this case, because it's human hair, because it's been sitting in a box and in a hairnet, you're going to need to like kind of free it up a little bit. Okay. So I say get some warm water, um, or give it a warm shampoo with the salon quality product, and then you can start to style it, okay? Because the warm water will start to relax it a little bit. And that's like really important to relax that. Like I can control that and get it to where I want it to go. And you guys, that is the whole thing. That's why we did this today, to give you guys some tips on where we can go with it. I mean, there you go, this total wave. Again, I would take the sides down a little bit, you know, this I would relax a little bit. How do we relax it? Well, let me show them, Michael. Since you're already wearing it, I mean, I might as well, I might as well do this, right? So you guys, oh, another tip. You can steam, guys. Don't forget to use your steamers. Eight to 10 inches away, you can steam and comb. Steam and comb. That's how you're gonna also relax the hair. But let me see if I can do this without getting all tangled up. So again, we remiss. Let's suppose this was shampooed, right? I am going to take my brush and you're just going to direct the hair where you want it to go. Again, we've not cut this. We've not, we've not really removed any of the bulk. 
but you just want to direct it where you want to go. I'm using in this case the metal pins because they really work through the hair nice and they also give a little bit of pull so I can help move it in the direction I want. So that's how you do it. That's how you work through it. And, you know, unlike human hair, you know, or your own bio hair, which is more pliable because it gets shampooed on a daily basis, right? This hair, you're going to have to work a little bit more. And it can be, you know, one of those things where you're like, I'm going to sit down today and I'm going to work on my hair. Like, <laughs> that's what you got to do. So, and as far as products go, I mean, I would say the same thing you, you do in, this, in your wig salon, right? What do you, you have products for them, Michael, that like spray wax, pomade, yeah, hair clay, yeah, things like that. Yeah, I think professional grade, you know, products were good. I mean, that's kind of what I use. You know, um, this is just a fiber paste. I try not to use anything that is, if it's if it's too oily based. I tend to like kind of focus on water based uh, gels and pomades and, and fibers and things like that because you don't want to have an issue when you are trying to like shampoo this product out and start all over again. So, um, again, I just could just. I want to do so many things of this, but like you, I want to cut it too. I want to shape it. I want to do like some tapering on the sides, but that's what it's all about. You guys, it's about, you know, making these your own um, and styling them. So again, we're looking at distinguished. This is M36 S and it is our human hair synthetic blend. So let me see if we got any more questions. Anybody want to know something? Let me see. Okay. Ah, does the styling wax rinse out of the wig easily? That was from Robert. Uh, Robert, styling waxes, as I said, if they're water-based, yes, they will. Um, but you really still want to shampoo them. Um, and you don't really have to shampoo bigger. There you go. You got the tassel looked out. You don't really have to shampoo them like too much. I mean, you have to do a light shampoo. And again, you got to treat these really well. Um, one of the most common questions I get all the time is about this lace. And does this lace like loosen and does it lift up a little bit? It can over time stretch a little bit. If you're wearing these every day, yeah, that might happen. So one of the things you want to keep in mind is that you can still glue it down. There's a, what do you guys have something that like, there's a, a brand out there that I, I've used. People oh, use the got to be gel a lot of the stays, time, but it's it stays. That's it. That's what I was thinking of. It stays as like a roll on and you can roll it just like right onto like the forehead and then just like press the base on. So that's all it takes, it's a little bit of pressing um, and then it kind of dries really quickly. And that breaks up really easily too, right? I mean, you don't have any issues with it. Oh, sorry, I messed up your hair. Quickly water soluble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's, what, that's why I like to recommend water-based products for any type of wig, really. Um, especially if you want to like re-wet it and style it a couple of times before having to shampoo it, you know, cause that just, you can kind of build that up a little bit, you know? So that is what we have here, people. We uh, looked at the Galant, which we're giving away today. We looked at the Classic, uh, the Daring, and of course, the Distinguished. So um, one of the things I also want to talk about is when you get your him wig, it's going to come in a box like this, okay? We've kept it a little dark and a little mysterious, so you can still feel like somewhat like it's not an advertisement. It's not in a bright pink box for you guys. It is in a black box that could go into your closet and be very discreet. So one of the things we were trying to think about with doing that. So, you know, no shame in the game, right? Not at all. I mean, <laughs> gotta have fun. So you guys, I wanna thank you. Listen, if you like what you saw today and if you have a lot of questions, cause I'm sure after watching this, there's gonna be a lot of questions that come up. So if you have some questions and you wanna learn more about the Himwig collection, please let us know. We can do a whole styling class. We can talk about a particular wig. We can do whatever you like. Give us your comments. Let us know what you think and what issues you may be having and what success you've been having and how it's been working for you. We'd love when you send us some pictures. Please do that. So I'm going to announce our winner today. Our winner today, let me see, who is it? Ah, our winner today is Michael A. Richmond. Michael. Thank you for joining us. I hope you got something good and productive out of this today. Um, I want to thank you, Michael, for joining us and for being a part of this show. It was my pleasure. Um, and coming in and just taking time out of your day. I know you're a busy hairdresser, so it's really important that, that to me that you did this. So um, thank you. You're welcome. I learned a lot. That's, that's 
I'm just very excited. <laughs> I know we were talking about. It. We thought this would be a fun. This would be a fun one to do. So you guys, thank you very much for joining us, and we hope to see you soon. We got another Facebook Live coming your way, and uh, probably be a happy hour. So get those cocktails ready for next time. I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye.